and welcome to our pre-lab activity associated with the endocrine system. Um, and to start out with, uh, we're going to take a look at first the pituitary gland or the hypothesis. Uh, keep in mind from the lecture that the pituitary gland is in essence almost like two structures that are anatomically kind of combined. We're going to have the anterior pituitary which is uh, essentially uh, specialized uh, epithelial cells, specialized hormone secreting cells, and we're going to have the neural hypothesis. The neural hypothesis is the posterior pituitary, and this is essentially a downgrowth uh, of nervous system tissues coming from uh, the hypothalamus. Now if we take a look at this, uh, we can see that essentially as a, a stalk coming down from the hypothalamus, we're going to have the infundibulum of the posterior pituitary, the neural hypothesis. And that's going to extend down into the pars nervosa, kind of this paler staining region, which is going to be characteristic of the posterior pituitary. Now, kind of wrapped around it, we're going to have the anterior pituitary. And the anterior pituitary is going to be identified by like the pars intermedia, uh, which is going to be located essentially between the pars distalis, this very dark, uh, very distinctly staining region here, uh, that's the prominent region within uh, the anterior pituitary. We're also going to have the pars tuberalis, which kind of slightly kind of wraps around the epidemiolum, uh, but we don't really see that uh, on this slide. Now, if we take a look at the anterior pituitary, the adenohypothesis, again, recognize that these are uh, cells of epithelial origin involved with uh, secreting hormones. And so we're not directly innervated by hypothalamic nerves. So they're essentially going to be responding to uh, hormone releasing factors that are released into the capillary beds. And so review that uh, from the lecture as you're going through. Now the cells within the adenohypothesis are either going to be chromophobes that don't take up a lot of stain, they're going to be parallel staining, or chromophils, cells that chromo color fill like, like the color they take up the stains. And they're either going to be acidophilic chromophils or basophilic chromophils. And so the chromophobes, as we said, are going to be these paler staining cells kind of outlined here with the arrows. Uh, because they don't take up the stain. Chromophobe, fear, color, in essence. They're not taking up the stain. Now, uh, there may be a variety of explanations for what these chromophobes are, but the major majority of them are going to be follicular cells. They're going to be stellate cells. They're going to form the, the stroma, the mesh work, the support work uh, for the entire uh, gland. They may be undifferentiated non-secretory cells, kind of a small population of those. Uh, but the predominant ones are going to be these follicular cells. The second category of cells within the anterior pituitary, the adenohypothesis, are going to be the acidophilic chromophils. Acidophilic because they're basically going to be taking up the eosin. They're going to be staining pink in hematoxin eosin stain specimens. If we take a look at them, they're going to be smaller cells, um, larger granules um, than the basophilic chromophils, and they're going to be involved with secreting uh, simple protein hormones. And so two categories of acidophilic chromophils, either somatotropes, which are going to be involved with the production of growth hormone, or mammotropes, and the mammotropes are going to be involved with the production of prolactin. You can remember the acidophilic chromophils with the pneumo, uh, pneumonic uh, GPA, growth hormone, prolactin, acidophilic chromophil. The second category of chromophils within the anterior pituitary, the adenohypothesis, are going to be the basophilic chromophils. Uh, the basophilic chromophils, uh, again, are going to be taking up the stain um, that is basophilic. So again, a stain purplish or, or, or dark blue with hematoxin eosin. And you can see these clustered in around the eosinophilic uh, chromophils. Lots of different categories of these basophilic chromophils. You could have the gonadotropes, which will secrete either follicle-stimulating hormone or luteinizing hormone. They're not going to secrete both. Uh, corticotropes, which uh, secrete ACTH, thyrotropes that secrete thyroid uh, stimulating hormone. You can remember the majority of the basophilic chromophils with the mnemonic E flat, basophilic, FSH, LH, ACTH, and TSH. There's also going to be a population of basophilic chromophils that are only found in the pars intermediate, so only found where you can find that junction between the anterior and the posterior pituitary. And those melanotropes are going to be secreting beta uh, melanocyte stimulating hormone. If we move back into the posterior pituitary, the neurohypothesis, what we're going to see is a very pale staining region, especially when we compare it to the anterior pituitary. And the reason for that is that the cells that are going to be present are going to be glial cells. They're going to be supportive cells. Uh, they're going to be the pituocytes. 
uh, the secretory cells, in essence, are going to be remnant or uh, a portion of neurons which are sitting up in the hypothalamus that are going to extend an unmyelinated axon down into the posterior pituitary. And so you may see a little bit of an enlargement, which we refer to as the herring bodies, uh, where we're going to have the neurocircuitory granules, but the majority of the posterior pituitary is going to be unmyelinated axons, having a relatively pale staining appearance. Now, the cells uh, that are secreting through the posterior pituitary are going to have their cell bodies within the paraventricular nucleus, and they're going to be secreting oxytocin, or cells sitting within the supraoptic nucleus of the hypothalamus, and they're going to be secreting antidiuretic hormone, ADH. Both of these cells are going to be uh, secreting neurophysin, which is a binding protein which helps uh, the transport of either oxytocin or antidiuretic hormone. The next organ we're going to look at is going to be the thyroid gland. Uh, the thyroid gland is going to be characterized by very distinct thyroid follicles. And so we can take a look at it. We're going to have circular aggregates, and so we're going to have the thyroid follicle lined by thyroid follicular cells. So lined by a simple epithelium, and so either simple squamous, simple columnar, or simple uh, cuboidal, uh, but essentially a single layer of cells surrounding it. And these cells are going to have the, the normal peptide hormone secreting phenotype. And so uh, slightly euchromatic nucleus, uh, lots of rough endoplasmic reticulum, uh, lots of Golgi. Uh, but what makes the thyroid follicular cells unique, these cells here kind of surrounding a follicle, is that they're going to be soaring, storing their secretory product, the thyroglobulin, extracellularly. And so we're going to have the colloid at the center of each one of these thyroid follicles. And then when it's stimulated by thyroid stimulated hormones, these thyroid follicular cells are essentially going to gobble up a small portion of the colloid, break it down, and then release the thyroid hormones. Now in between these uh, thyroid follicles, uh, possibly here, but I'm not sure because this is just getting into it, um, but essentially in this area, even if it's not these cells here, are going to be some pale staining cells called parafollicular cells or C cells. Uh, these cells are going to be staining poorly. They're going to be located in between the thyroid follicles, uh, so they're not going to be associated with uh, these circular uh, follicle structures. And it's going to be these C cells, the parafollicular cells, which are going to be involved with the secretion of calcitonin. Now the parathyroid gland is going to be a structure that's anatomically very close to and adjacent to the thyroid gland. And so we can see the parathyroid gland in the region over here, and then nice clusters of the thyroid follicles over here. So colloid to the center, uh, thyroid follicular cells around the outside. And so again, an identifying characteristic of the thyroid gland. We take a look at higher magnification at the cells within the parathyroid gland. What we're going to see are kind of basophilic cells, which are going to be the chief cells, which are going to be the most numerous ones. And these are going to be involved with the synthesis and secretion of parathyroid hormone. In between the chief cells, we're going to have some oxophil cells. The oxophil cells are going to be larger, less numerous than the chief cells, but they're going to be uh, acidophilic. They're going to stain pinker in relationship to the bluish uh, chief cells. Uh, the oxophil cells, uh, again, are going to be less numerous than the chief cells. They're going to gradually increase in age, but they should never uh, outnumber uh, the chief cells. And then finally, and we're not seeing it in this section because it's a, a section from a young parathyroid, uh, white fat, white adipocytes is going to gradually increase throughout the parathyroid gland and it will eventually take up about 50%, about half of the structure of the gland itself. Uh, so essentially replacing the chief cells and the oxophil cells. Then the final structure we're going to take a look at uh, for our lecture on the endocrine, uh, pre-lab on the endocrine system are going to be the adrenal glands. Uh, so again, the adrenal glands are going to be hormone secreting structures that are found almost like caps under, uh, on top of uh, the kidneys on either side. The adrenal cortex is going to be the outer region of the adrenal gland. Uh, so it's going to be sitting underneath a dense connective tissue capsule uh, in the region here. And there are going to be three distinct regions of uh, the adrenal cortex. We're going to have the zone of glomerulosa, so essentially a zone of glomeruli, uh, so essentially kind of circular clusters of these secretory cells. We're going to have the zone of fasciculata, so essentially a zone of fascicles or a zone of kind of straight cords of these secretory cells. And then deeper to that, kind of closer to the medulla down here, what would be at the bottom, we're going to have the zone of reticularis. So a zone of a reticulum or this kind of 
interwoven network of uh, these secretory cells. We take a look at this uh, at higher magnification. We've got the connective tissue capsule around the outside, and then we're going to have these arched or circular clusters of cells, which are going to be associated with the zona glomerulosa. About 15% of the volume uh, of the adrenal gland immediately underline the capsule, and the cells within the zona glomerulosa are going to be involved with secreting mineral corticoids. So they're going to be secreting things like aldosterone. If we go down from these clusters, we're going to get into the straight bundles or straight fascicles of the zona fasciculata. And so if we take a look at this, this is going to be the majority of the adrenal cortex. And we're going to see relatively straight cords of cells, you know, capillaries are going to be running in between them, but straight fascicles of the zona fasciculata. Uh, the cells of the zona fasciculata are going to be involved with secreting glucocorticoids. So they're going to be secreting things like cortisol or corticosterone. And then down at the bottom of the zona uh, fasciculata, we're going to get the zona reticularis. And so we're going to get this irregular anastomosing network, this kind of branch network of the secretory cells. Relatively minor region, about 7% of the volume. Uh, but it's going to be the region between those straight fascicles and the very pale staining um, adrenal medulla, which we'll talk about coming up. Now, the, the, the cells of the zona reticularis are going to secrete gonadocorticoids. So they're going to secrete adrenal androgens. They're going to have kind of testosterone-like uh, properties, but they're going to be relatively uh, weak. They're not going to have a, a lot of androgenizing effect. Uh, so you're going to essentially be uh, secreting these sex steroids. Getting down into the middle region, the inner region of the adrenal gland, we get to the adrenal medulla. And this is going to be paler staining than what we're going to see in the adrenal cortex. And if we take a look at it, the majority of the cells are going to be referred to as chromaffin cells or pheochromocytes. These pheochromocytes or chromaffin cells are going to be modified postganglionic sympathetic neurons. They're going to have larger nuclei, lots of secretory granules within them, and they're going to be involved with synthesizing and secreting catecholamines. They're going to secrete adrenaline or noradrenaline, or epinephrine or norepinephrine, if you use that terminology. Um, and so, in essence, the majority of the cells are going to be the chromaffin cells. Scattered inst among these chromaffin cells are going to be ganglion neurons, and so a few parasympathetic neurons, which look like parasympathetic neurons, large cell body, uh, distinct euchromatic nucleus, uh, distinct nucleolus uh, being present, uh, but they're going to be rarer uh, within the adrenal medulla. And this finishes up our overview or pre-lab activity uh, associated with the endocrine system. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at hoffmanj at arcadia.edu. Thank you.